So today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be comparing three different carbon plated trainers, the Zoomfly 6 from Nike, the Magic Speed 4 from ASICS, and the SC Trainer V3 from New Balance. And we're going to do this both subjectively and objectively. So that means I'm going to start out by giving you my opinions of the shoe just based on feel from running on them. And then we're gonna dive into the data and look at the data behind these different runs and these different shoes. And to collect that data, I used Stride Duo, which are these little pods here on the shoe. And for being so small, it's crazy how much data that they collect. Just a quick disclaimer that Stride is sponsoring this video, but it's a great product that I've been using over the past few years anyways, so I'm glad I can finally make a video about it. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive into the comparison. Let's talk about the Magic Speed 4 from ASIC. It uses Flight Foam Blast Foam with a puck of Flight Foam Turbo in the forefoot. Of course, it has that full length carbon plate in there as well. It has the highest stack height of these three shoes with 44 in the heel and 36 in the forefoot. Despite having the most foam, it is also just barely the lightest coming in at 8.5 ounces. So I've been loving all the cushioning underfoot from this shoe. It gives it a lot of protection, especially for those long runs. I like the rocker and the forefoot as well. However, the foam itself, since there's only a small amount of that super foam in the forefoot, I feel like it's not the easiest to compress and kind of bounce back, giving you that kind of energetic springy feel. So that's one area it's lacking, but this is still one of my favorite carbon plated trainers. And I especially think that it's a great training companion to the Metaspeed Sky Paris. Moving on to the SC Trainer V3 from New Balance, the missile uses a 100% of fuel cell foam. However, this isn't the same formula that's in the SC Elite. The SC Elite uses 100% PIBO, while this version of fuel cell is mostly EVA with some PIBO blended in. Of course, this one does have a carbon plate in there as well to help stabilize the foam and give you some extra pop. It has a stack height of 40 millimeters in the heel, 34 in the forefoot, but despite having less foam than the Magic Speed 4, it is almost an ounce and a half heavier coming in at 9.8 ounces. So one thing I really liked about the SC Trainer V3 was it's kind of in the middle of the road in the terms of softness. It's not too soft where it's kind of mushy and squishy, but it's also not too firm where you're not able to compress that foam. It's right there in the middle where it's it compresses enough, but it also bounces back, giving you a more energetic feel to it. Still not as energetic as some other foams, especially like flagship super foams. However, I do think that this shoe is very versatile. It felt comfortable when I was taking it slow on easy days or when I was picking up the pace. Now on to the Zoomfly 6 from Nike. So the shoe has a top layer of Zoomax foam, a carbon plate in the middle, and the EVA based SR2 foam in the bottom. The stack height for a men's size 9 is 40 millimeters in the heel and 32 in the forefoot and weighs 8.6 ounces, just 0.1 ounce heavier than the Magic Speed 4. Despite being one of the least cushioned shoes on paper, compared to this 3, I felt that it, it almost felt like there was more cushion than there actually was. It felt closer to the Magic Speed 4 when I was actually running in it. It felt very protective and cushioned underfoot. That being said though, when you're picking up the pace, you did still get some nice snappy ground feel responsiveness off the forefoot. It wasn't super energetic and springy, but it did firm up and was fast and snappy. I personally really like using the shoe as a training companion to the Alpha Fly 3, and I even think that this could be a great race day option for somebody just getting into running or looking for a more budget-friendly shoe. So just wrapping up my subjective feelings, meaning just based on my feel and running in the shoes, I think that I would put my number one as the Zoom Fly 6, my number two as the Magic Speed 4, and my number three as the SC Elite. I think that weight on the SC Elite makes it not my favorite for picking up the pace. I really like the overall feel of the Zoom Fly and then that cushioning on the Magic Speed is great as well. But let's go ahead and dive into the data and see what the results say. So we're gonna be looking at a month's worth of data. These are just from the stride pods that I've been running in outside on normal everyday runs. This wasn't from a lab in a controlled environment, the same pace or anything. So there are gonna be some different variables in here. It's not gonna be a super exact science. 
I think it's cool to see that just your everyday runs with these little pods can produce so much information that we can make a video on it. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, let's go ahead and start by looking at a month's worth of runs in the SC Trainer V3 versus the Magic Speed 4 in Stride's Footpath Visualization Tool. So at slower paces, my footpath looks pretty similar in both shoes. However, when picking it up, the Magic Speed had a higher kickback, which tends to correlate to a reduced stride cycle, making it more efficient. Some key metrics we want to look at are leg spring stiffness and vertical oscillation. A higher leg spring stiffness means that there is more efficient snapback of energy. The LSS is higher in the SC3. However, the Magic Speed 4 has a lower vertical oscillation, which means that more energy is going forward than up. So the Magic Speed 4 seems to propel me forward more at this pace, but the SC Trainer 3 has better elastic energy return. Now taking a look at the Zoomfly 6 versus the SC Trainer at easy moderate pace, the Zoomfly has a higher kickback and picking up the pace makes it even higher even though the cadence between the two shoes is about the same. Leg spring stiffness is about the same for both shoes, but the Zoomfly 6 tends to be a hair higher. Vertical oscillation and impact loading rate are lower on Zoomfly 6, meaning that I have more forward energy with the Zoomfly 6, and the shoe is better at distributing shock than the SC Trainer. And finally, the Magic Speed 4 versus the Zoomfly 6. Starting off with the kickback, the Zoomfly 6 again has a slightly higher kickback that gets even higher with the increase of pace, again correlating with a higher cadence and better efficiency. The leg spring stiffness is consistently higher on the Zoomfly 6, making it the most performant of the two for me. Vertical oscillation is pretty close with these two, with the Zoomfly 6 a smidge better. And looking at the impact loading rate, it looks like the magic speed is better here which makes sense because it has a lot more foam underneath, but it is also more unstable. You can see how the Magic Speed 4, there's a pretty big variance between my left and right leg, and my right leg is taking up more impact than my left. All right, so that was a lot of diagrams and pictures and data, but what does it all mean? Well, to very oversimplify everything, the shoe that was most performant for me was the Zoomfly 6. The shoe that that is best at distributing shock is the Magic Speed 4. And the smoothest shoe for me, meaning that more of my energy is going forward instead of just straight up, is again the Zoomfly 6. Overall, it seems like my factless thoughts tended to match up with the data driven results. I tended to like the Zoomfly 6 the most, and it turns out that this was the most performant and smoothest for me. While I did like the underfoot cushioning of the Magic Speed 4, and it turns out that this one is the best at distributing shock. It had the best impact loading rates for me. So that lined up there. So all this data is super specialized to me. It's all different runs, different paces for my running form. So it's not gonna be the exact same for you just cause the Zoomfly 6 is the best for me. That doesn't mean that it's none of these shoes are gonna work for you except for that one. Again, it's all very personalized, but I thought it'd be cool just to share my thoughts and my opinions and the data behind them. But again, these are all very versatile shoes that work great at different paces. Have you tried any of these shoes? Are you gonna pick any of them up? what do you think of the data portion? Do you think that was really cool like me, nerd out about that type of stuff? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again for Stride. I'll put links down to their page and some extra articles if you are more interested about some of these metrics in the product. Thanks for watching and as always, keep on running.